Hello, say hi. Hi. George and I are here today to tell you the story. What's it called, George? On the road to Emmaus. On the road to Emmaus. So we're going to read the story, grab a drink and a biscuit. It'll be just like we're in Stars or Ark or 10 o'clock club. And uh, then we'll have a little chat. So here we go. So on the road to Emmaus. And this all happened after Easter. And what happened at Easter? What happened to Jesus? He died on the cross. He died on the cross. And then he'd been put, where he'd been buried? In a, in a tomb. Tomb. And Mary and friends had gone and he wasn't there anymore. And then this is the next bit of the story. So we don't know what happened to Jesus at this point. And then this is the next bit of the story. Later, on that Sunday evening, two of Jesus' friends were walking along the road from Jerusalem to the village of Emmaus. And as they walked, they talked about Jesus. Soon, Jesus caught up with them and walked along with them, but they didn't recognise him and they thought he was a stranger. Why are you so sad? He asked them. Are you the only stranger in all of Jerusalem who doesn't know what has happened there over the last few days? Asked one of the men. Why? What has happened? Asked the, asked the stranger. We are talking about Jesus of Nazareth, said the other man. He was a great teacher. We believed he was sent by God to save our people. But the chief priests and our Roman rulers said that he broke the laws and that he must die. They nailed, to him, a nailed him to a cross last Friday and now he is dead. When some women went to his tomb today, they found that his body had gone. They said angels told them that Jesus was alive. Who is it? They don't realise that it's Jesus, do they? No. Do you think Jesus likes surprising them? Yeah. Mm. It's like you do sometimes when you play hide and seek. I think he likes, I think he thought it was a little bit funny that they didn't know who he was and he was excited to tell them that it was him again. Do you yeah. think? Let's find out then. The stranger told them that the prophets had said all this would happen and explained it to them. At last, they reached Emmaus late in the evening, and the stranger then looked as if he would walk on. But the two men invited him in to stay and have supper with them. They still don't realise it's Jesus, do they? When they sat down to eat, the stranger picked up a loaf of bread, <laughs> said a prayer, broke the bread into pieces and gave it to the two men. Then the two men, what happened that at that moment? When Jesus broke the bread with them and gave it to them, did, what happened? They realised what? Um, the stranger was Jesus. They realised that at that moment, when he broke the bread and gave it to them, they realised that it was Jesus all along. They stared for him, him at, for a moment and then he was gone. So just like that, they realised it was him and then he disappeared just like that again. Very excited, the two men got up from the table and ran all the way back to Jerusalem. They soon found the disciples and some of Jesus' other friends. They told them that they had seen Jesus, had spoken to him, and that he was alive. At first, the disciples did not believe them, but one said it must be true because Peter had seen him. They locked the door of the room because they were afraid of the Roman rulers and chief priests. Then suddenly, Jesus was there in the room with them. At first they were scared. They thought that he must be a ghost. But Jesus said, don't be afraid. Look at the wounds on my hands and feet. Touch me and see that I am made of flesh and bone. And then they really knew that it was Jesus. Have you anything to eat? Asked Jesus. And they gave him some cooked fish and some honeycomb. And they watched him eat it. And at last, they were finally convinced that Jesus really was alive. He explained to them that this was all part of God's plan and that it had all been foretold by the prophets. Christ had to die and to come alive again on the third day, he said. God forgives everyone who believes in him. This is the message for all the people in the world and you must go and tell them. So we think there's three important things to remember about this story. The first thing was that I think Jesus really liked surprising them, don't we? We think he was so happy to be able to come back and tell people that he was alive and that that miracle had happened. 
during Easter, there was so much sadness, wasn't there? How do you think that him and his friends felt when Jesus died on the cross? Sad. Sad. What else? Angry. Annoyed. Annoyed. They must have been really scared. Frustrated. Really frustrated. There were so many negative feelings. And Jesus coming back, what did that bring? Turn that fear into... How do you think they felt when they knew that Jesus was actually alive? Very happy. Really happy. Excited. Excited. There was joy, peace, all the good things. And at the moment, some of us feel a little bit like that, don't we? Because what's going on in our world at the moment? What's happening to us all at the moment? Dying. Where people are dying, aren't they? Why is that? We're all in lockdown, aren't we? Why are we in lockdown? Because of the coronavirus. Because of coronavirus. Lots of people are scared or unhappy or lonely. But this story tells us that Jesus coming back, we don't need to feel like that, do we? It was all meant to be. He was meant to die for us, to bring happiness and peace and get rid of fear in our lives. And the last thing to learn from this story, and maybe the most important thing, is, can you just read that last sentence, George? This is the message for all the people in the world, and you must go and tell them. Jesus said, you must go and tell them. We must now carry on as Jesus did and tell people why Jesus died and that he loves us and that believing in him brings peace and happiness and joy and takes away that fear. So that's really important, isn't it? That during this time, we find ways to share his love and to tell people all about him. So if you've got a book, Bible at home or a, a Bible story, but maybe go and read The Road to Emmaus. Um, with your mummy and daddy or your brothers and sisters today and see what you think that story is telling us. But for us, it's that we don't need to be scared and that we need to go and share God's love and tell people about it. Have a wonderful Sunday, everyone at St. Leonard's. We miss you all terribly. And George too, say hello to all your friends. Bye. And Stars and Ark and 10 o'clock club. God bless you all. Bye. Bye. Dear God, we thank you for our NHS staff who are working tirelessly in unimaginable circumstances to keep people well. Please keep them and their families free from illness. Bless, guide and comfort those who have been directly affected by the coronavirus. May they turn to you in their troubled times. We thank you also for other key workers, the teachers and carers who are working through their holidays to look after children, allowing the NHS staff to keep working. For the police, ambulance, fire department, essential builders and other keeping our country going. Lord God, bless the Queen and our government. We thank you for keeping her and her family safe and for bringing our Prime Minister back to health. We thank you that the Queen was able to address the nation and give guidance and hope to all. We still have access to our wonderful countryside for walks through woods, for the beautiful flowers and wild animals. Bless our families, keep them safe and well, both mentally and physically. May this time together have moments to treasure. Even though we are not able to physically be with our friends, help us to keep in contact with them 
to laugh, to share moments of joy and sorrow with them. Father, bless our church and our church family. We pray for Reverend Ben and Reverend Sue, for our church wardens and all those who worship at St. Leeds.